What's going on guys, it's Omniarch, and today we're going to be talking about the brand new Call of Duty game, Call of Duty World War 2. Now I know you guys have seen a million videos already on YouTube um, of the gameplay, of people breaking down trailers and breaking down everything, basically, and everything about the game has been dissected and talked about. Um, and so in this video, I'm basically just going to be giving you guys my first impressions playing the beta um, the past couple of weekends, and just giving you my honest opinions on the game, um, and kind of where I stand, because obviously I've been playing and Call of Duty on this channel for like three years now, which is absolutely insane. Um, I started this channel right when Advanced Warfare came out, and I played it on the PS3 right when my channel started. Um, and yeah, so basically, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the new Call of Duty, my opinions on it, if I'm excited or not for the game, uh, and let's just jump right into it. So, right off the bat, I just want to say um, booting up the beta was incredible to just see and feel. Uh, the vibe of the game being in World War II, um, just, you know, it, it just, it was such a different feeling than what we've been getting from the past few Call of Duties, where they're just, like, really trying to immerse us in this futuristic world that nobody really cares about. Um, when you start talking about World War II, you're talking about battles and, and things that actually happened. Like, these things are real, um, we've seen them before, we've talked about them, even, like, growing up in school, um, this is all real stuff, so it's really awesome to pop in this game. Uh, and you get something that you know and love which is Call of Duty and it's got that feel um, but it's also got the familiarity of the roots of Call of Duty uh, because as you guys know Call of Duty 1 through 3 plus World at War were all uh, you know based on World War 2 so it's just really really awesome to f like finally go back to that and, and like this is the roots of Call of Duty like this is where the franchise started in World War 2 uh, and here we are in 2017 getting an, a high definition brand new Call of Duty game that's set in World War 2 it just just felt really cool and when I when I turned the game on like just getting the nostalgic feeling of like 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 it, it even reminded me of the Medal of Honor games like Medal of Honor Frontline and Rising Sun like those games back for the PS2 and GameCube it reminded me of that like like just the feeling of a classic just classic first person shooter set in World War 2 like this is where the genre began like literally this is what made the first person shooter genre blow up I mean yes we had Halo 1 and 2 those started it and then Call of Duty and Medal of Honor well Medal of Honor blew up and then Call of Duty just like blew the entire industry apart um and here we are today so i really feel like like world war ii ties into first person shooters so well it's like it's like butter and toast like it's just such a great combination so to have the franchise that i have known and loved for a long time come back to world war ii honestly i can't tell you how excited i am for that um but the game itself um it was, it was really cool. I really enjoyed playing it. And I will say, I'll admit, that I didn't play the beta as much as I wanted to. Um, I've had tons of hours at work lately, and there was just not, not enough time to really sit down and enjoy the beta. Um, but from what I've played, it's a really, really, really fun game. Um, and it was able to land that fast-paced feeling without adding boost jumping. And that's a huge thing. Uh, the removal of boost jumping is paramount in the success of this franchise um, because it was going nowhere um, as far as like infinite warfare no one gives a shit nobody cares about infinite warfare uh, no one's cared since the game dropped um, and no one just it's just so funny and there's been times like during the beta where I get into a, a close quarters gunfight and I see the person like jumping up and down because you can tell they're trying to boost jump out of the way but they lose the gunfight because they're not a better player and that's the biggest thing it's like it's like the boost jumping added a level of of reaction time where if you were a 13 year old kid with impeccable reaction time because you're younger you can win those gunfights just by boost jumping fat like a millisecond faster than your opponent because now you're off the screen uh, and now we're both on the ground and you're jumping and it's not helping uh, and and I'm gunning you down and it feels amazing to not feel fucked over by by the boost jumping and that's really what it was um, so having that removed for me was a big deal and I'm super excited that boost jumping is no longer a thing. Um, the running and sliding is cool. The bayonet charge seems like it needs a little bit of work. Um, I see what they were going for there, but there's just no instances where the bayonet charge was something that I found useful. And I don't know if you guys experienced the same thing, but if I'm in a close quarters gunfight, um, the peepish, like the PPSH, uh, that gun would just melt you immediately. Most guns melted you pretty fast, but that gun specifically in close quarters um, just dominated. So there was no time 
to bayonet charge someone because as you're charging at them you're dead already so i see where they're trying to add a, a couple of more movement mechanics in there to try and make it as fast paced and i think they did a good job but that stuff needs a little bit of reworking which is fine because like i said it's the beta so yeah um as far as the maps go um the one in the trenches i don't know the name that one was cool but it was kind of weird because it had like it was like it wasn't 3d it was like it was like two and a half d because you had like you can go up up above the trenches and it almost certainly meant you died but if you surprise someone coming around a corner in the trench and you were up on the trench like there was no way for them to see so you'd get the kill um so it was a little bit weird because like you just you kind of knew where people were coming from but sometimes you didn't i don't know if i played more maybe i would understand the map a little bit better um but overall the maps were really cool and i was really excited uh, about all that stuff now then the biggest thing i'm going to talk about is create a class because this is way different than the past couple of games uh, and i don't know and again i didn't play this too much and i have not spent too much time reading news about call of duty watching videos about the about the, the game the beta anything i really don't know much about world war ii to be honest as far as the game goes um so I don't know if much is going to change with create a class when the official game comes out, but as it stands now, uh, you basically pick your division and then you can pick whatever gun you want to use and then you pick a basic training and that kind of replaces the perk loadout. So, you, you know, in the past couple of Call of Duties and really in the past Call of Duties forever, um, you would have the, the perk one, two, and three slot uh, and then you would have to pick between a certain amount of perks for that slot and that was that. And there was some, some ways around it like in... Um, in certain games, like in Modern Warfare 3, uh, you as kill streaks you could get additional perks. Um, in other games, there would be um, like a, a death streak where if you died enough times, you would spawn with a random perk, you know, things like that. But in general, that's how it's been. Uh, and now it looks like you're picking one basic training, uh, and it's a super powerful perk, and, and it's really like geared toward whatever gun you're picking, uh, and and it can kind of go hand in hand with your division. Uh, and so I think it's a really, really like big shift because it feels like there's not that much to customize um, you have your primary weapon with two attachments and if you pick the basic training to add a third one that's an option and then you have your pistol and one grenade uh, and like if you want more grenades you would have to choose a different basic training so I think some balancing needs to be done because some of the basic trainings are just way better than others like like reloading faster is just way better than than taking uh you know some an, an additional um you know or taking a primary as your secondary like it seems like like some of the ones are no-brainers uh and it also leaves me a little bit uh wishing there was more because sometimes i want to reload faster and also be able to be like have scavenger on you know um that was a big part of my game plan when i would play is i, I need to reload faster because i'm always reloading but i never want to want to run out of ammo with my gun because i hate picking up somebody else's gun because i don't know if it's going to be good i don't know if it's, it's gonna have ammo um so i was always a player who likes scavenger and now it's like i'm forced but to pick between the two the two which is good um because it adds a little bit of balance where you can't have all the overpowered perks uh like at the same time but also i don't know it seems like there's not too much to the creative class so we'll have to see when the official game comes out like how they kind of change that up um the fact that the divisions have like their own little special like perks and, and stuff too which is that's just really really cool um so like you pick the division that's gonna basically align with how you want to play whether you're gonna do like infantry with the assault rifles and stuff like that or like uh, i think it was the air force for the submachine guns or whatever the navy i don't remember um but yeah so like it, it's just a really cool way to change up the creative class system that we've had for a long time and i think it really simplifies it to the point where like new players can't really get overwhelmed um but veteran players can easily figure out like like what the equivalent was the past call of duties to what it is now um so i don't know it's cool i don't see the need for really a secondary and the fact that you only get one grenade is kind of like eh because it's like you already took so it's it feels like to me that they already took so much out of the creative class that it's like you could have given me an like at least a grenade and a, and a stun or something right instead of just one of one of either of them like you have to pick and choose but i guess that'll kind of separate the good players from the bad players and who can work around that and see who can use it to their advantage and you really have to know when should you use your one stun you have one stun grenade you have no regular grenades no anything else 
you have to know when to use it so they really simplified the creative class but they kind of kept all the same things that were there in a way they just kind of move things around and i think that's really cool um and it makes you actually like want to pick the correct division i think in infinite warfare has a similar thing where you can pick different teams or whatever i'm not sure and then they have like their own like unlock trees for variants or something i really don't play infinite warfare so i don't really know but i think that's kind of like um something that that's in the game right and um yeah i just never change teams because i don't give a shit like it didn't really make a difference but in this game there's certain perks that come along with certain divisions so it would make sense to unlock different ones and and like really focus on one or another based on which unlocks you want to get and stuff so I kind of get it. I, I see how it, it makes your choices actually matter as opposed to like you can just build like your your one class for every single scenario and just run with that. I think they're trying to get away from that to where like you want to have multiple classes for different maps or different scenarios and stuff like that. Uh, and I think this is their way of trying to like fine tune that and really make sure that you make classes that count instead of just like looking up, oh, what's the most overpowered gun? Okay, I'll pick that. What are the best perks? Okay, I'll pick those three and then use that same class for your the entire year of the game being released um so i think that's like you know kind of cool we'll see um and the final thing that i want to talk about uh, and again like i want to reiterate how excited i am for it being in world war ii uh, and how excited i am that they've changed the creative class and kind of seeing what they can do with that um, so I'm excited for the game in general but one thing that I want to say is there really needs to be some gun balance done uh, in the game because it's just like I don't know maybe I'm used to being fast like a fast paced player um, but some of the guns seemed like they were way better like the peepish uh, it just was it seemed like it was way better than the grease gun because it shot faster and had a, had better accuracy so it seems like in every instance that gun was always going to be like be better. So, I don't know why you would ever pick the Grease Gun once you unlock the Peepish, and it's the second unlock, so it's like, you know, and obviously they're going to do gun balancing because this was the beta, and the whole point of a beta is to, like, test everything and say, okay, how does this run when we, when we like, release it to the public? And they're going to take all that data and kind of figure out, okay, these guns were overused, which means they're probably really good. We'll tweak them to bring them down, or, or tweak other guns to bring it up, or something like that. Um, so that's fine, but, like, I think the gun balance out of the gate was a little bit rough, and, like, um, the, what is it, the M1941, the, the default, um, assault rifle, I believe it is, that, the recoil on that thing was just atrocious, and I, even when I was, like, burst firing it, like, you know, it just, it was not cutting it, like, I could not get, like, a medium to long range, like, not even a long range kill, just a medium to long range kill, uh, it didn't seem possible, um, I mean, I got a couple, but the recoil was just so bad, and, and it made me want to use the M1 Grand, uh, but if you pick the M1 Grand, then you're running around with a semi-automatic weapon, which it does kill in two shots, but you're gonna get caught off guard close range. So, I mean, between the two, I think the M1 Grand might be a little bit better, especially, especially at medium to long range, but... I don't know. I think there needs to be a lot of gun balance done because, like I said, the peeper seemed like it was the best gun overall, uh, and I didn't play that much, so I'm not sure like what some of the other guns were like. But that was just my experience playing the game. So I think gun balance is a big thing that they need to work on when they're going to release the the full game because, like I said, there's not that much in Creator class, uh, and maybe with attachments and stuff like that, like you can really fine tune a gun to be really good and make it competitive with other guns. But, like I said, from what I experienced, it seems like gun balance is going to be a big thing, uh, and that's just something I wanted to mention. Anyway, that's all that I really wanted to talk about for Call of Duty World War II. Yes, I'm really excited for the game. Um, no, I didn't play the beta too much, but I'm kind of okay with that, because I don't want to get sick of the game before the game even comes out, and I think that's kind of something that happened with Black Ops 3 um just because like we had the same couple of maps over and over again uh, and then a little bit of infinite warfare i didn't really care for infinite warfare too much even for the beta um was there even a beta for infinite warfare i don't even remember at this point um i think there was i think there was yeah but either way um i'm, I'm okay with not playing it that much because like i said i don't want to ruin the game for me uh and and like i just want this to be a good call of duty and i think me being in the dark and having like no expectations really helps with that um so when the game comes out in november i can kind of be a excited and feel good about it um, but we're still a long ways away which sucks i mean this is the beginning of september we still have all of this month and then all of october and then the game comes out so whatever we have a while to wait but it's it's kind of cool to get a nice taste of it and i'm liking what i'm seeing so far and that's really good news so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up i would really appreciate that comment down below telling me any sort of videos you want me to make in the future or other types of gameplay you want me to play uh and there should be another video at this at some point later this week um who knows maybe some cool announcements not entirely sure i gotta get things all worked out and that's about it guys so thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch and i will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.